Hey everybody, how you doing, Zach? Hello, Andrew. How are you? Good, very good. Good. Let's see if people are coming in. So let me just remind everyone: welcome. Where are you watching from? Let's see people coming in. Let us know where you're watching from. And um, for those who are watching from the Facebook groups, let me remind you to please give StreamYard permission to show your name and profile pic. So I'll be able to credit you when you comment or ask questions. That's just the link under the live StreamYard.com slash Facebook. Give it a click. Give permissions. Jump on back. Let's see. We got Jeff from New Jersey. Good to see you, Jeff. Hi, my Jeff. Friend jo my friend John from Texas. Hi, John. Hello, Jack and Andrew. Good to see you here, man. And then uh, Jeff says, I've been looking forward to this interview. Jack is one of my favorite artists. Nice. Bless you, Jeff. Really appreciate it. Cool. Yeah, and feel free to uh, share. Share the link out to your friends. They can watch on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube. <laughs> Not Twitch yet, but. <laughs> so. so how you doing, Jack? Things are good? Yeah, I'm really good, Andrew. How about yourself? Good. And the weather? How's the weather in the UK? Cool. Very humid. Very humid, actually. Oh. So, uh, cloudy skies, but still really hot. So John says, "I'm curious about your T-shirt. So, what's Stone Cold?" I think it's a wrestling T-shirt. <laughs> I'm not even into wrestling, but I, I like to go. I like to search through the thrift shops, particularly since I put on a few pounds. <laughs> oh, you look fine. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, cool. So, uh, yeah, John says, uh, nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> cool. Thanks, John. Great. So, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, before we begin, let me uh, just give a, a quick shout out to StreamYard. So, StreamYard, the multi-streaming app, makes it possible to stream to Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. So, Thank you, StreamYard. Here's a little intro. Thanks, StreamYard. StreamYard. <laughs> Let's see. So we got uh, Jeff says... Your piece, A Rumor of Monsters, captivates me. It's very ethereal and otherworldly, as well as being strikingly beautiful and stark at the same time. Thanks so much, Jeff. Uh, I've actually sent an aluminium copy of that to be, I'm exhibiting at the Milan Fashion Week uh, next month. So, yeah, I'll share some content with that and hopefully get some sales too. It's a particular favorite of mine too, Rumor of Monsters. I like the color palette. Cool. Nice. I will, Jack, do you want to uh, introduce yourself and then take it from there? Thanks, Andrew. Uh, I'm a 42-year-old photographer from Northampton, England. Uh, I started, well, I started photography about 12 years ago and professional photography about six years ago. Uh, I've won over 100 professional photography awards, and I've recently, with my colleagues, Dylan Story and Mohamed Amin Moker from Tunisia, we've opened the Influx Gallery Sorry, and Dominic Abbey from uh, London. Sure. Forgetting one of my colleagues then, that's terrible. Uh, so yeah, we've opened the Influx Gallery in London and it's uh, we're lucky enough to have some of the world famous photographers. We're representing them now and uh, selling their work and it's, it's, the response has been amazing and it's an absolute pleasure. It's great to actually showcase the work of artists as you know, Andrew, uh, as a career, as a professional artist, it can be quite self-absorbing. You're constantly pushing for opportunities and pushing your own work. And I'm really getting a buzz out of uh, championing the work of some of my favorite artists, such as you, Andrew, and Bridget and Patrizia and all the rest. Should, of I, should I screen share so you can show the influx? Yeah, that'd be great. There that'd we go. So this is a website. And if we go to our featured artist page, we'll click on here. That's another image by Andrew. That's good. And uh, when I started, I, I didn't realize the impact and, and the response that the gallery would have. Uh, it's basically a who's who of uh, world photography. 
and digital art now we've got some real world beaters on on board so if we go to patrizia the italian maestro, maestro is it maestro can that be a female andrew or i guess so I'm not, I'm not quite sure the proper usage but it sounds good yeah it's great stuff so, huh? yeah unbelievable work so we're lucky to have some unbelievable artists uh with the gallery and uh it's going from strength to strength uh i'm still nice. i've got my own professional career which is uh proving and and i operate a photography studio as well in uh i do a lot of commercial photography in northampton england so it's a time consuming job juggling everything as i know andrew you, you have a similar <laughs> i wouldn't say problem more of a should we say a predicament maybe to just uh juggling what, what, it's like we're juggling yeah the yeah it's prior, pro prioritizing what comes first really sure and then this is uh the spanish artist gus one of my dear friends who also produces some pretty spectacular yeah, the, the thing i like about his work too is it really reminds me of the days when i did etchings there's like a real yeah. kind of etching quality to it yeah gus is very well versed in in art history and i think that you can see that uh from his work nice and we'll, we'll look at one more before we uh go to my shares let's go to bridget so her work is always astounds me so i think bridget is uh she does matte painting and 3d and digital manipulation via photoshop uh when i see her work posted on your groups andrew people seem and other groups like frames magazine people just seem to go absolutely crazy for it yeah pretty imaginative uh, great surrealism you know yeah. and, and jack is the uh the website is it for this, it would be influxgallery.com artists. Is that or has it changed? Uh, let's just have a look. Influx slash gallery.com slash featured slash artists. Okay. Yeah, I'll update that in the future. But I think if, in yeah. general, if you do a search for influx gallery, it comes right up. So yeah, looks Brilliant. great. Should we move to the shares now, Andrew? Yeah. So uh boom, there's your slides looking great. Perfect. So when one of my first passions in in photography was uh, the genre of urbex. Oh, uh, Jack, be before yeah. you jump in, uh, Chris asks Jack, what's your background prior to photography? So maybe. Oh, uh, hi, Chris. Thanks for joining us. So my background uh, prior to photography, uh, I went to university and uh, I I got a master's in American history and film. So American cinema was a big passion of mine. I combined this with a career as a rare record seller and dealer. So I collected uh, rare vinyl from the years, uh, in particular from 1967 to 1973 was my specialist years. And uh, in the genres of uh, blues, Northern soul, psychedelica, progressive music from right. Europe, UK and USA, and also experimental music too. So that's what I did as a living before I uh, started photography. And then you said you you had briefly you said you studied uh, criminology, correct? Like American. Yeah, that was part that was part of my uh, my studies was uh, criminology, particularly American criminology, which uh, I, I saw a quote from Sebastian Salgado, the famous Brazilian photographer, and he said that uh, sometimes it's an advantage to not go to art school and to not study conventional photography and study another genre even politics and then bring that into your photography work and i think that's definitely helped me as i've brought the the record collecting aspect and the american history and the criminology and obviously a film as well as you'll nice. see later in my slides cool nice all right so the slides are up looks great so yeah this this genre was actually uh, i was part of a group of urbex photographers it was great fun actually andrew we used to get in cars and go to all these wacky locations hair raising locations actually climbing up the sides of buildings hiding from security and <laughs> god knows what else and uh yeah there was a hell of a lot of pigeon poo about as you can see from this photo <laughs> This was an abandoned church about 20 miles out of uh, Northampton. I actually went there with a the photographer, Corin Spinks, if he's listening. Hi, Corin. Uh, great fun looking back. 
Uh, it was a whole scene uh, associated with the urbex scene, which uh, was good and bad. And uh, that's nice. I was so obsessed with finding these locations, Andrew. So it, I used to go to sleep at night just thinking, I need new new photos. I need new locations. I was lucky enough to be commissioned uh, to photograph by another friend, Steve Prady, to photograph churches in the Ukraine. So uh, I actually had a Ukrainian host. <laughs> it is, John. It's a hell of a lot of food. <laughs> So uh, the trip to Ukraine was spectacular. I, I found that as a church photographer, the Catholic churches really went deeper than the other churches, as uh, Michael Benz would probably agree with me there. And uh, just some spectacular imagery from these churches. Back to uh, the dark. This was an, a Victorian, old abandoned Victorian train tunnel, also in Northamptonshire. Mm -hmm. I think it's called Catsby Tunnel, or, or I actually can't remember the name of this one. So what we did here is we set up a, a single flash, and I, I think we had a long exposure. And, uh, yeah. That's really a strange cool opening above, right? Yeah, that's an air vent, I think. And uh, I used a fisheye lens for this one. I think this was an 8 millimeter fisheye. It's funny looking back at my photography is so different now, but it's funny to see where, where it evolves from. Nice. And, uh, nice. But it was a lot of fun. That's also another photographer. So it's a big community thing, Urbex Photography. This is Mike Campbell, another friend of mine, but we used to go out on excursions. It helps when they can drive, Andrew, because I'm, I'm not a fan of driving myself. Yeah. I, I'm a Same. big walker. Same. Yeah, a big walker. So uh, cars aren't for me. That's another story entirely. This was an abandoned uh, army base in Cambridgeshire. I'm not sure what, I can't remember what lens I used for this one, but sure. this was a big sprawling complex with great fun, probably about 50 buildings. So you could just ramble around. I used to use a tripod and uh, trigger release, and that's about it, natural light. This one's no flash. This was another one of the spectacular churches in the Ukraine. Uh, just amazing. Like It blew me away. I was only there for a week. Hi, Dave. Thanks for tuning in. So some, some unbelievable architecture. I've got a lot of... Uh, we've got some big uh, names in architectural photography with Influx Gallery. And also uh, we're friends with a lot on Facebook too. Great. And uh, it's a fascinating genre. This was an abandoned factory in Lviv, Ukraine. I think we paid a security guard something like 50 cents to gain access. He wasn't going to let us in, uh, but we paid him a little bit of change and we got into the building. I love the peeling paint and the, the degradation. Big spender there, 50 cents, huh? <laughs> yeah, but funny enough, Andrew, that their, their economy is not great out there. So the yeah. people that we were engaged with in Ukraine, they're all professors at the local university. So very, very intellectual, educated people. And their wage was like $200 a month. Wow, crazy. And, and you know, you could go and have a, uh, I don't know what it's like. Obviously, it's completely different now because of the war and stuff. Yeah. But back then, you could go and have a free five-course meal for like $5. That's not, that was, sounds like when I visited uh, Bangkok and Thailand. Yeah. 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 It's really great. cool. Cool. Trip of a lifetime, really. Uh, this was an abandoned mental hospital or asylum in Northampton. My ex-girlfriend standing there, as again, as a long exposure. I always uh, drag my partners on these harebrained <laughs> expeditions <Okay>. too. <laughs> They'll probably hate me for it. Oh, no, Got a nice haunting feel, up. though, with the, the distant photo there. Yeah, but I make them walk about 20 miles. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, some ghostly apparitions. I particularly like the the cross in the broken window. It's like the shape of a cross. Sure. Right. So after the Urbex era, I found a studio in Northampton. And uh, partnering with my friend, the lovely Sharon Lewis, we embarked on uh, some studio photography. And uh, this is me back in 2016, I think it is. Uh, I had to do a bit of touching up, obviously. <laughs> but we were going 
for Renaissance portraiture here with Rembrandt lighting. Nice. And I think I overlaid some canvas textures in Photoshop as well. Yeah, Just the detail is really nice. Yeah, it's, with the canvas textures, it it helps because it, it lightens the shadows and it gives you, as you know, an overall painterly expressive kind of look. Excellent. Oh, I forgot it was me then. This is another Renaissance self-portrait in uh, Rembrandt lighting. Uh, I use Photoshop to place myself behind the, the rain window. Uh, I do like the lighting in this. This, this picture's won some quite big world photography awards at the Color Awards in Los Angeles. And uh, I think I, I got a, a gold medal from the Chromatic Color Awards as well for this one and a few others. Yeah, nice. So the Renaissance portraiture carried on to some... Uh, the girl in the middle is a model from Northampton called Abby. This is when she was quite young, about 16. Uh, the girl on the left is the famous French Parisian model, Romy Bondi. Uh, she liked my work, so we paid for her to come to get the train from Paris to Northampton to my studio. She was a lovely girl. And the girl on the right is a model called Amelia. She's also from Northampton. Uh, yeah, so uh, again, uh, good examples of Renaissance portraiture. And this is a photographer from Northampton called Mark Tier. Cool looking guy, cool photographer yeah. and a very lovely bloke as well. It, it's great. I, I find it really uh, refreshing and uh, exciting to collaborate with other photographers in the studio, aside from commercial work and aside from money when you're just doing a creative project. I, I think it's, it's great. to So you, you put your minds together and see what you can come up with. That's what, uh, what me and Mark did here. This is another uh, creative project with a model, Davy, Davy Granules. He's also uh, from my hometown, a Northampton lad. Here we, he looks quite angelic almost. Again, a, lo a lovely guy. Angelic, and, but uh, edgy. He has a certain edgy. Yeah. Too, yeah. He's, a, he's actually a punk rocker and a skateboarder. Right. So he had, he's actually got that uh, edginess inherent to it, but he's a lovely, lovely guy. So, um, so my friend John says, I'm really inspired by all these amazing images. You can drag me along one of your harebrained excursions anytime. Bless you, John. I would love that. Uh, I really appreciate the support and I, I follow your own work too. And I think it's really cool. So that, that would be really nice. And this is another, uh, this whole series was inspired by uh, people from my hometown in Northampton, but placing them in a kind of old world style or setting. I think we called it old world sensibilities, the Finnish series. But uh, this, this is Tyler, also uh, young, a lot younger than me, but uh, a great model. Kind of like it, this, this image combines the Renaissance with a kind of street edgy feel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're in the modern clothes and stuff. This is actually my dad. Uh, shout out to Andy Savage, <laughs> the king, the kingpin. Uh, we gave him a rough, and I think we just that's just some like duvet that kind of looks like a bearskin rug. Uh, it again, looks like he could be in a show, you know, like Game of Thrones, or <laughs> yeah, he does, he really does. Yeah, so shout out to my dad, nice, very supportive cool guy right. a gemini like you andrew as well That's right. <laughs> yeah good shot great so this image uh this is film noir which obviously i studied at university and have a huge interest in directors like hitchcock sidemark billy wilder and uh <clears throat> it's we i think we call this one film noir in technicolor so i had a perspex window that I sprayed some water on an old blind and we made, and we made it look like a room in the studio. This is a Davy granules again, as a model, uh, as you can see, as we're going to see in a second, film noir has had a huge impact upon particularly my early career. And, uh, this is Davy looking very menacing. And, uh, I love, uh, the ambiguity and the criminological implications within film noir photography and cinema. 
So a lot of my influences from my work actually comes from a cinematic rather than photographic. Right. This is uh, my fellow Influx Gallery colleague, Dominic Abbey. Uh, we tried to make him look like an old Canadian detective here with varying degrees of success, but he's, he's such a cool dude, Dominic, and uh, still rocking it with the modelling into his 50s which is what I'm hoping to do too, with the occasional self-portrait or photographers photographing me with my moustache, cool. which is cool. Now we're getting to the monochromatic work where I actually, this is what made my name in photography is this film noir type work. This is a did piece of digital art actually, uh, very influenced by the, uh, the timelessness of film noir movies. And you've got that menacing aura around the image with a guy in a hood and then the oval window. I like the composition of this piece. Nice. This, this is another uh, blend of criminolo criminological silhouettes with uh, the menacing subtext and ambiguity. Yeah, I could see that as a movie poster for sure. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like, yeah, like a Freddy Krueger type with a, uh, that's the train in the background as well. And a detective. Too. So I've seen that one before on the Influx yeah, Gallery site. Right? This has won some big awards, uh, this, this image. It's called The Girl on the Train. Also, uh, I want the viewer to ask a plethora of discerning questions and trying to place in their minds what's happening, uh, the emotions, and all of it remains shrouded by ambiguity, which I like. And it's the viewers asking questions of the image itself, which I find fascinating, but it's not all self-explanatory. So there's storytelling going on at a multitude of levels. I like to do that it. too, right? Yeah, you do, yeah. And it's, it's fascinating because every single person that views your work has a different take on it, which is what I like. Mm -hmm. And uh, cool. Sometimes it's hard to describe your own work because you don't know yourself. You've just got an imaginative synopsis and it can change as well, which is cool. This was another one of my ex-girlfriends. I sound terrible now, Michelle. <laughs> uh, this was called Psych Out. So I, when people look at this, it could be about the relationship. It's two black and white portraits placed in frames. I love the lighting in this and I inserted gradients. As you know, Andrew, gradients can be very helpful to any uh, photo manipulation. Nice. I love the ambiguity to this piece as well. Yeah, very yeah. mysterious, that one too. Yeah, asks, asks a lot of questions. It would also be cool to, you know, with an image like this, you could go back and then do something else where you take the the images of the portraits out and then use it as a, a background for some other new kind of imagery too, right? It's nice to, Abs yeah, to, absolutely to revisit. Yeah, I think so, especially when you're revisiting with complete completely different generic conventions and stuff. It's really cool. Nice. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. So this is a church in Northampton. Uh, it's actually the only. Uh, Northampton Cathedral, the only Catholic uh, cathedral in Northampton. Again, I've used gradients, shadows, silhouettes. I've got a nun. I actually, that's photo manipulation. The church is, I photograph that in, in North, but the nun is actually placed behind there just for the added element of mystery. Yeah, I like, I love this one myself a lot. Yeah. Very mysterious. Uh, yeah, and the and touch of the, the eyes looking at you, too, is kind of nice. Yeah. Mysterious quality. I like uh, duplicates or quadruples or threes. I think that, like it can really have an effect when you're duplicating faces and distorting them and making cool creates suggestions. A creates a rhythm to it, which is nice. It does, yeah. And I'm a big fan of jazz music as well, so I'm, I'm into that rhythm. Excellent. This is a uh, young Michelle. I think we, we called this one the Noires. So the, the quintessential femme fatale. Uh, lovely girl, but I wanted to sort of emanate danger 
uh, hidden uh, female sex sexuality. Uh, yeah, so again, heavily shadowed, nice. mysterious, with a slight edge of menace too, which I think film noir has to when you have when you have a man in a hat or the detective or the crime fighter. You know, there's storylines there, which uh, she has it, has a bit of a tough look, like there's some danger there. So yeah, it's almost like entering the underbelly of a society and uh, the underbelly of a city almost so i'm fascinated by that's great and this is uh using photo manipulation together with film noir so i had a, a stage where everything had to be a crow uh, in true edgar Allan poe type fashion and uh yeah again photoshop photo manipulations just having fun you did Being you did creative. a whole series with the crow as the theme yeah i did yeah had a lot of crow uh, men and women with crow heads. Yeah, cool. Traveling and doing all kinds of crazy antics. Nice. Mm. This is a, a self portrait. Uh, this image was actually it's a mix, mixture influence between film noir and French cinema of the nineteen sixties. So I tried to like give it a kind of psychedelic edge with some gradients and. Excellent. And some toning. This was my uh, a series that I did called Noir Noirisms, also oh. featuring the aforesaid crow. Now that one reminds me of Hitchcock, like the birds. Yes, so. very Hitchcockian. Uh, one of my favorite directors to this day. What I loved about Hitchcock is he could literally go to any genre, from horror to a thriller to comedy. He, he was sk very skillfully adept at moving between genres. Nice. This is actually uh, a portrait by Barry Pickering, which I edited in a film noir style. I like it. Almost like an, an old Germanic sort of look to myself here, like an old German playing the accordion. Mm. I like it. Again, I interwove textures. and. I like the sepia tone type of uh coloring yeah great lighting by barry shout out to barry pickering another great photographer that we've done a lot of work together mm, that's good i think this was called cinematique again uh the influences are very easy to spot the shadows the little element of horror and obviously the cinema which is where i studied in cinema I still am a, am a big cinephile to this day. It's nice. changed. Lot, it's changed a lot now, hasn't it, Andrew? And people are starting to focus on series now. A series of images, you're saying? No, I'm talking about uh, movie watching. So whereas before it used oh, to be the, the 90 minute film, people are now the the series. The yeah, I have noticed that. I have. I was yeah. just saying that last night that there's too many. Um, too many shows where I, I kind of prefer a movie though. Like if a movie takes me in and then, you know, gives me a certain feeling. And then if I don't like it, I'm free from it. But I have, yeah. a, I have a bad habit that sometimes if I watch a show and I don't really like it, I still keep trying to give it a chance. <laughs> and then I find <laughs> myself like resentful when it's done. You know, I, I watched uh, blue velvet last night, David Lynch. Oh, I love that film. Yeah. There were some really, really good moments that, Cool. So this is uh, oh, the folly of war. This is called. I think it's an old German gas mask mixed with uh, in an urbex setting. It's actually a studio portrait which we made to look like it was in an abandoned building. Uh, this, this would make like a great movie poster, or book cover. Or, yeah. Yeah. The tires were out the back on, of my yard at the studio. And then the great thing about Davey is he's a collector of memorabilia, war memorabilia, gas masks, guns. So we combined it all. Oh, that's – thank you, Dave. That's an incredible fact. Hitchcock appeared in Coronation Street. Wow. That's a Manchester-based UK soap opera. I did not know that. That's cool. Mm. I'm going to have to check that on Google after the show. 
Now, now, a question I have uh, with this image. Um, so I've seen a few of your sepia images. And in general, do you tend to like to do the sepia in Photoshop? Or do you also use, like, say, Lightroom, Lightroom Classic? Sometimes the only time I really use Lightroom is when I'm really going for the, the high contrast black and white look. Uh, the rest of the time, I always create it in Photoshop. Uh, I studied to become an Adobe certified expert in Photoshop. I know that means nothing because there's a hell of a lot of areas to Photoshop, but it helped meet my overall uh, understanding of a program. And it also is good because I do for photography, photography, like you, Andrew, Photoshop training and photography training from the studio. So yeah. that being an Adobe certified expert helps nice. with that as well to teach at all levels. And do you keep um, like presets of, of some of the sepia tones or do you kind of create them fresh each time? So what the lifesaver for me here, Andrew, was actually the gradient maps. So in the gradient maps, there's a photographic toning in the legacy gradients. And sure. in this photographic toning, they've actually got black and white tones from the history of cinema. And it's just fantastic when you're doing monochromatic work. So anyone that wants to experiment with cinematic black and white gradients, all you've got to do is go to gradient map and seek out the legacy gradients and the photographic toning. And, and this I'll, is you know, a lot. I'll of jump back book. into that a bit more. So, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, Terry, Terry's here. Terry Davis. Good to see you here. She says, wonderful work. I really want to explore some of these terrific results. Hi, Terry. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks for joining us tonight. Yeah. Nice. Mm, that's good too. This was an image called Demasked. And uh, we started, myself and my colleagues, we started going to a lot of art galleries. And I started to become obsessed with street art. And I kind of merged the film noir influence with the street art with this image. Again, hidden female sexuality, menacing, uh, menacing storytelling, but with beauty too with an ethereal beauty and a very simple piece of minimalism. As you can see, Andrew, as a Photoshop artist, it's not really a complicated piece, but still very striking. It's a nice challenge, right, to uh, create yeah. simplified work, yeah. And I think this is just bevel and emboss uh, in the same color as a background. Bit of bevel and emboss, bit of shadowing, bit of cutting nice. out, and a bit of blur. Yeah, nice. Now we're getting more into the modern street art gallery work that I've been commissioned to do. Uh, I'm represented by a few galleries now, the Black Line Gallery in San Francisco, the Passport Out Gallery in Milan, uh, the Influx Gallery in London, and also the Zari Gallery in London as well with my colleague Dominic Abbey. This was heavily influenced by uh, Richard Hambleton, uh, the, the New York street artist from the 1980s, a contemporary of Basquiat. Apparently, Basquiat was jealous that Hamilton's work sold for more money than him. And he used to paint sh graffiti mur murals of shadow men around New York City. And uh, I just love his work. Goes for a fortune now. Uh, he was a heroin addict and he ended up dying That's in right. 2017. So I think he lived up in, into his early 60s. But uh, this incorporates uh, a lot of Hamilton type ideals. Nice. with some modern with some modern day street art now myself and dominic abbey i mentioned that we were represented by the Zari gallery how we came to uh, get in contact with the gallery was we were commissioned by black lives matter to do some work for them and this was uh, one of the pieces that uh, dominic and i created again very street art and very colorful and gallery orientated work. This is another piece that we did. We're featuring the famous crow. Again, a very mixed media feel to the work here using uh, paints, canvas textures. Yeah, some very love, nice textures. Yeah. Yeah, I love I love a painterly feel to any kind of mixed media or digital art i know that some of my favorite pieces of your yours andrew uh, look like paintings to me and that they're actually for sale that we're pushing with the influx gallery as we speak nice 
This image was influenced, I mentioned earlier, my prior career, previous career as a record collector. This image is called Kraut Rock. So one of my favorite musical genres was uh, Germanic Psychedelica or Kraut Rock. So out of the ruins of post-war Germany, these musicians started becoming more and more experimental, producing electronica, crazy guitar sounds, taking a lot of acid by the looks of things in, in the late 60s and producing a real experimental type of music. Uh, I collected it. Uh, when uh, it goes for a lot of money on vinyl some of these bands are seminal today like new canon faust and uh, this image was certainly influenced by the album covers of that particular musical genre and and who are some of your favorites i mean there's obviously what Kraftwerk is a big one yeah i love Kraft. my favorite band from that whole era are can Oh yeah, so, can can is yeah. very hypnotic too. I like that sound. Yeah. Just amazing the the guitarist, the drummer, and the thing is with Can is they were producing electronica uh, twenty years before their time, and you know you can listen to their music from the seventies today, and musicians are absolutely blown away by uh, mm -hmm. what they're producing. It's just so experimental. I've always had uh, a strong urge to side side with experimental art forms. Cool. Uh, people pushing boundaries and not just sticking to the norm. Uh, I think we had young Tyrone Williams on here a few weeks ago. His work is, uh, is a product of that kind of new wave experimentalism, which uh, I, I really love. This is called Skull Fiend, again, influenced by British street art and graffiti artists, but a piece an actual piece of digital art again with that sepia sepia color palette nice this particular image uh was i don't know i think i was thinking about uh, los angeles riots actually andrew when i created this i don't know why it reminds me of that but again shadow men in the visor Strong. It could be blood, it could be paint. That's what was going through my head anyway, folks, when I created this one. <laughs> it's probably not what anyone else is taking from the piece of art, but. Nice. Mm, that's great, yeah. This one is called Aphrodisiac. Again, part of my series, Contemporary Photographic Street Art. I see a lot of these as being posters, CD covers, book covers. Yeah, nice. Yeah. I've sold I've sold quite a few of these in in some top galleries, so long right. may that continue. Uh, this one uh, I took to the Flux exhibition in in London. A big shout out to Lisa Gray, wonderful woman, and uh, who has her finger really on the pulse of a London art scene. She knows who to champion, and a big thank you to Lisa to putting me to getting me involved with Flux. Nice. Again, this is another piece of contemporary photographic street art. Can, can we go back to the last one? I just had yeah, a cool. question. So, um, so with this kind of field of like flowery kind of liquidy, um, is, is that like, did you get that from say an abstract, um, wall mural or something, or did you, did you combine different elements and kind of like paint it and make it that kind of liquidy or liquefy kind of feel? I think I use liquefy and a smudge tool just on, on a bit of paint. Nice. And then uh, the other is just paint brushes. I think Great. Photoshop paint brushes. Nice. And the back and my background is paint texture, but I just changed the color. It was either hue saturation or image adjustments, replace color, one of the two. And then I just uh, put the eye in. The single eye, I think, has more impact with this rather than if I had both eyes. Nice. It looks great. Thank you, Andrew. Cool. So this one combines the street art with, with a bit of Art Nouveau. Also a psychedelic feel. I, lo I, love pa I just love the idea of paint splatters and running paint down the canvas. 
Yeah, you know, nice nice contrast between this solitary or solid imagery and then the texture kind of floating down. Yeah. yeah. So you've got the, the psychedelica here mixed with street art, mixed with uh, the art nouveau with the birds. So in terms of using stock imagery with this, when an art, I think when an artist is over a hundred years, uh, it enters a public domain. So I had a look at some very, very old art nouveau pieces of art. And I'll just cut some stuff out and and I really have fun uh, creating photographic collage. Nice. It's a great genre. Again, this is a very graffiti orientated piece. Lots of paint textures, lots of brushwork, quite impactful. In my phase of going to a lot of galleries, in London and around the country with young Dominic Abbey, my, uh, ga my gallery sidekick and mentor in some regards. So we've had a lot of fun just getting in Dominic's car and, uh, you know, but sometimes how you get places in life is life is just socialize and you just go and network. As you know, Andrew, with your at your conferences, you meet you get some unbelievable business opportunities and meet some really cool people when you just put yourself out there and you just go and mingle and you go and chat. And uh you know, I was gonna say conferences like you know, Adobe Max, which is coming to LA in October. It's quite nice that you know you can see a lot of the friends that you've been friends with for years online and on Facebook, you can then see them in person and connect, you know. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. Cool. Especially when you've got shared interests and passions. Yeah. You know, so there's always a lot to talk about at these conferences or at the galleries. That looks good. Cool. This is a, I'm going to be appearing as a special guest at Milan Fashion Week next month. And this is a piece that I've uh, commissioned for, for them. It's I've done it on aluminium, aluminium diabond. It's called Avalon, and it's part of my series Valkyries, which is about female goddesses, female Germanic pagan and Nordic goddesses from the old world. Cool. Again, very much painterly orientated contemporary art. And this is what uh, the rumor of monsters. So yeah, you've that's got a strong one horror mixed with with paint i like the different angles of the faces again dupl using dupl duplicity there's some newspaper with a skull faded into the background so this piece again street art meets psychedelica meets a, and a bit of film noir my free most uh engaging influences really kind of film reminds noir. me of the um can't remember what the name of the the album was but peter gabriel where his face was melting coming down that was a great album yeah yeah cool and then again uh gradients blending modes experimentation paint nice. and colors i think if you look to the right of his face andrew you can see i think that's the exclusion blending mode in photoshop mm. you can have a lot of fun with that and it's uh creates yeah, i love the blending and, modes on the blending modes. yeah so cool once you get uh playing on the blending modes it's hard to stop as a photoshop artist it always adds a bit more depth, I think, to the image too. Whereas, you know, if you're just doing a layer mask and erasing, that's has a certain depth, but the the blending modes brings it into another also mysterious zone that I like. You know, you yeah, something that you use one time might have a completely different effect because of the images you're combining. So yeah. Yeah. And I don't know about you, Andrew, but I find it's as some of this compositing is hit and miss. I mean, you get to a stage and you're just experimenting. And some of it's not going to work. And, you you know, you go through a few misses to get the hit. And I think that's what I did with this piece. It was I was just having fun. You get in like, the zone. Like visual jazz, right? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. But then the greatest musicians never hit a bum note like John Coltrane. Right. But, uh, you never know, though. Maybe like in the when they're practicing on something, they try to do something and it didn't work out, you know? Yeah. Maybe in the early days. <laughs> cool. Again, this is... Uh, I should have mentioned my love of surrealism too because uh, surrealism plays a big part with my artworks. And it, as of yours, Andrew, you also use surrealism in a totally different way, but no less engaging. And this combines uh, religious painting. Uh, the, the Jesus Christ is actually reversed with the exclusion blending mode, I think, in this piece to look like a surreal godlike face coming into the ether. I'm talking about in the background and then in the foreground, just, uh, I love experimental art. And to me, uh, experimenting heavily is when I, when I really get the biggest buzz out of my artworks. I don't think about sales. I just think about what I want to do. Sure. And I think that, that really helps. Um, uh, I'm confident in my opinion of where I want my art to go and uh, what I want to achieve, which I think really helps, you know, with, uh, and I like to change up my style a lot, as you've seen with this uh, vast array of different generic conventions and stylistic. Yeah, don't uh, you feel different. like if you're doing certain images and you feel like you're, focusing on too much on the same motif or style and all of a sudden you like want to divert to a new kind yeah. of series i think it helps as well because uh i run a photography studio so i'll go from like a conventional portrait one minute to out there experimental digital art like this and uh i'm interested in in both and like i'm doing a wedding on friday so you know it's some i, I do commercial photography too so uh yeah i just i seem to flip some galleries don't like that. They like to look on your feed and sure. see a, a cohesive style, but it's just not me. I'm, I'm into breaking rules. Uh, art, to me, art has no rules. I think, I think, to be honest, though, I think that if some artists, you know, I can respect their work, like their work, but if a lot of their work, even for years, stays the same type of motifs and style, it gets a bit boring to me. I agree. And, uh, you know, the evolution of uh, an artist's work is what's fascinating to see. If, if they just stick to the same style, they're cool, but it does become boring after a while. Yeah. Cool. So this is uh, street art combined with uh, an old shot from my Urbex days. I can't remember. It's an abandoned corridor of some point of, some point of view. And then I've got the, the paint splashes coming down. A lot of brushwork, the ripped sort of newspaper. I like I like that as well. I find it very visually striking. I like this piece because I, I like the overall color palette, and it's yeah, just two, cool. Two different dimensions, sense of depth. Yeah, the ripped face on one, and then the depth of the kind of corridor looking on the right. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it's a nice combination of styles. Again, experimenting with this piece, uh, an aban the, ab the same abandoned factory that I showed you earlier from Lviv, Ukraine, with uh, a little bit of 3D and uh, photographic collage and a lot of painterly brushes. Strange piece. <laughs> Quite demonic, actually. It almost looks like you started with some 3D type program with the mapping on the left. Yeah, that's for 3D. And then it's uh, I took it into Photoshop and started manipulating. Nice. Very demonic piece, so this one. Uh, yeah, I like the kind of like flame light behind. It has a life of yeah. its own almost. Yeah. yeah. And with the, 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 the co elements of ripped newspaper and collage at the bottom, I like as well. Sort of like almost like a comic book character. So when you showed this to friends and, and family, they were like, are you all right? <laughs> <laughs> They know me by now, Andrew. So they're used to, they're used to like severe experimentation. Yeah, it's cool. And, uh, I think I'm the same as you. Is when people tell us to do a certain style, we go in the opposite direction. 
yeah. <laughs> it pushes us further away into so, the realms. So a question I have for you is, um, you know, I've, I've recently told people about this more and more, but, um, you know, I tutor Photoshop in Lightroom um, and, you know, every step of the way, you know, use this brush, go to the options bar, do this, do that. But don't you feel that like if someone wants you to create your artwork on the spot and then talk about how you create it, it you you can't get in the zone, you kind of lose yeah. Yeah. the depth of it? So mine's more of an unconscious process, like you just said. So right. you're unconsciously doing stuff and getting in the zone. When you teach Photoshop, uh, I'm sure you do the same. You have some of your work that you uh, put together step by step for your student, which is cool, but it never really reaches the, the same depths as when you're in the zone. I'm, like we said yeah. earlier, like a jazz musician, uh, it's just really cool and really therapeutic and really cathartic, really. Yeah, I think uh, I tend to to use like you know some of my photos or stock images that are single, you know, image or you know person, and then go over the kind of techniques in Photoshop as opposed yeah. to creating. Because I just the idea of creating for you know step by step instructions as you're creating it just doesn't work. You can't get into the zone at all. But then sometimes you get a student that has really got artistic sensibilities and that's they what want. they want. That's what they want is to be able to create. And that's when you can kind of let go a little bit. Really yeah, cool. I'm, I'm going to be doing a presentation soon where I'm going to open up a layered file and dissect it. So I'd rather do that, like dissect it and talk about what I did than try to create from scratch. You know, so. I really love that idea you had where you get a, a group of artists each doing a piece on the canvas to create a kind of group piece i think that's that's something for the future yeah really. like i like either you or i start an image and then we send yeah. it to each other and then you do something to it and send yeah. it to somebody else yeah it can either be a great piece of art or it can end disastrously but either way it would be really fun to watch <laughs> <laughs> be funny if you had like a friend who uh d didn't like your work or you know wasn't as friendly to us as we thought and then we had we had done all these iterations and developed it and became really cool and then they like put like a big x at the <laughs> end or something <laughs> painted it black just black completely white ruined it. yeah <laughs> <laughs> put a big x or black with a white dot on it or something <laughs> that's all right we just delete their layers and let someone else have a go. that's right make sure you keep the layers <laughs> cool nice this is another piece that I really love. It's called Brain Ticket. This is named after a very obscure 1970s. I think they're Italian bands called Brain Ticket. Mm. Just experimenting. My and, friend, uh, uh, friend John says it looks like a H.R. Geiger and Chuck Jones collaboration. Oh, I, I love those. I love those references, John. That really pleases me. Uh, Geiger's one of my favorite artists. Yeah, pretty intense stuff too really cool really cool. cool this one's called analog so again the meeting of uh street art this has got a kind of futuristic uh feel sci-fi-esque feel i like the Partic i was gonna say the colors make it very electric yeah sorry to again lots of blending modes used here combinations of blending modes Lots of gradients. And John says, loving all of these. So great. Cool. Bless you, John. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Cool. Nice. I think this is a final image of the day. Uh, again, experimenting with paint, silhouette, shadow men. I don't know what was going on in the bottom right corner, but I loved it. It's almost like some yeah. sinister sinister god being met Just by a sinister god or a ghost or yeah something. yeah it's one of my favorite pieces this cool nice so i hope you uh, enjoyed the images yeah fantastic so do let us know if anyone has any questions or comments let us know everyone can be shy these days with the yeah.
Yeah, nice work. Thank you, Andrew. It's a pleasure to be on your show, as always. So, yeah, so if there's no up oh, here, we've got something. So Jeff says, thank you for the skilled and very in-depth interview or presentation. Yeah, Andrew, thank you for sharing your process and passion, Jack. Thanks so much, Jeff. I appreciate all your comments, too. I'm definitely going to look at that Coronation Street uh, Hitchcock thing as well. That's fascinating to me. Someone on Facebook says, fantastic. Thanks cool. so much. And uh, so let me remind everybody that uh, first, please check out the Influx Gallery at itfluxgallery.com. So you see Jack's work, my work, and a lot of other great artists. And then you can follow Jack at Influx Gallery at influxgallery.com slash featured slash Jack slash Savage. And then here we go, where always brings out a smile. <laughs> Follow Jack Savage online at savagedart.com. Great title, yeah. And then also Jack is on Instagram. So instagram.com slash jacksavage underscore photo. And if you want to see my work, I'm at Influx Gallery at uh, influxgallery.com featured Andrew Cavanaugh. So yeah, great, great stuff. Thanks, Jack. Really great. Thanks so much, Andrew. Appreciate and, uh, it. We got uh, Terry says, uh, Terry Davis, I really love the view of your work. Thanks so much. Thanks for tuning in, Terry. Really appreciate it. And John does have a question. Jack, is there a particular style you like the most? I want to try and do some of the Rembrandt-esque photography. What I would say with that, John, is get the lighting right in the studio and then try and transpose some canvas layers and blending modes uh, and also some dodge and burn. Yep. And uh, if you're asking what style I like the most, uh, I have to say film noir, uh, even bringing film noir into, into a kind of technicolor. I just love, I think it has so much depth and people don't, people don't use the style enough in contemporary photography. It has a lot of power, the old, the, the old Hollywood lighting, the streets of New York or San Francisco or London. It's just really cool. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll always be fascinated with film noir till the day I die. Thanks, John. John. Yeah, we'll really look forward to seeing the results of your portraiture too. Yeah, John started a new um, Pixelingo Facebook page for his work too. It looks Building yeah, up I've, I've seen it. yeah, he's he's getting very, very, very cool artist and one to watch. Oh, and then uh, I did want to say, and I'm not sure if you're on there yet, Jack, but you you should be soon. Is um, if people are interested, a lot of great photographers and artists are also putting their work up on Vero. So yeah. V E R O is also another one. Just I guess people are a bit frustrated with some of the limitations for photographers and artists on Instagram. Yeah. Now that they're pushing video and reels so much. So um yeah, I've noticed that. So when I go on to Instagram or Facebook, you end up just watching videos rather than seeing what your friends are posting and it's yeah. and it's the algorithms and it is very annoying and I've seen a lot of my very well respected friends and fellow photographers move to Vero. Uh, yeah, and I've seen like the numbers drop on people yeah. engaging my work there. So, yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to open a count up this week, Andrew. Thanks for the heads up on that. Yeah, I do think they need to kind of work on the the uh, user interface and the way that people engage a bit more. But um, but it is nice. The quality is good, and supposedly they don't um, they don't tell you like the the images have to be a certain size or anything. So it you can upload pretty good quality imagery. Yeah. It, it doesn't butcher your, your resolution like Facebook yeah, does. Yeah, crop it in weird ways. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, excellent. So, yeah, th thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thanks so much, Jack. It was a great one. And uh, so as, as usual, I will be posting the recording in the different uh, Facebook groups, Twitter, LinkedIn, and, uh, of course, my YouTube. So please do check it out on YouTube. Feel free to share it with your friends. It was a Excellent session. Really creative work, Jack. Love your work. So, Bless you. Thanks, brother. Thanks, Jack. And thanks, everybody. Have a good one.